<clears throat> Good morning. Last several Sundays, our readings have, have reminded us of the fact that our, our Lord provides for all of our needs of both soul and body and does so so very richly. Uh, Jesus would remind us, though, and, and have us focus our attention on, on the more important spiritual and eternal matters. We begin our worship then with our singing of our opening hymn, Hymn 481.
Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent His only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave His life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. be with you. Let us pray. Merciful Father, you gave your Son Jesus as the heavenly bread of life. Grant us faith to feast on him in your word and sacraments, that we may be nourished unto life everlasting. Through your Son Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. First reading this morning is recorded in Exodus chapter 16, beginning with verse 15. 
When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Everyone is to gather as much as they need. Take an omer for each person you have in your tent. The Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much, some little. And when they, when they measured it by the omer, the one who gathered much did not have too much, and the one who gathered little did not have too little. Everyone had gathered just as much as they needed. Then Moses said to them, No one is to keep any of it until morning. However, some of them paid no attention to Moses. They kept part of it until morning, but it was full of maggots and began to smell. So Moses was angry with them. Each morning everyone gathered as much as they needed, and when the sun grew hot it melted away. On the sixth day they gathered twice as much, two omers for each person, and the leaders of the community came and reported this to Moses. He said to them, This is what the Lord commanded. Tomorrow is to be a day of Sabbath rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. So bake what you want to bake and boil what you want to boil. Save whatever is left and keep it until morning. So they saved it until morning as Moses commanded, and it did not stink or get maggots in it. Eat it today, Moses said, because today is a Sabbath to the Lord. You will not find any of it on the ground today. Six days you are to gather it, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will not be any. Nevertheless, some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather it, but they found none. Then the Lord said to Moses, How long will you refuse to keep my commands and my instructions? Bear in mind that the Lord has given you the Sabbath. That is why on the sixth day he gives you bread for two days. Everyone is to stay where they are on the seventh day. No one is to go out. So the people rested on the seventh day. The people of Israel called the bread manna. It was white like coriander seed and tasted like wafers made with honey. The word of the Lord. We join to sing Psalm 34.
Second reading is recorded in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. For I do not want you to be ignorant of the fact, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud, and that they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink. They drank from the rock that accompanied them, and that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. Their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. These things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us on whom the culmination of the ages has come. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. The word of the Lord. Please stand, we join to sing the gospel acclamation. was recorded in John chapter 6 beginning with verse 24. Once the crowd realized that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum in search of Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, What must we do to do the works God requires? Jesus answered, The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, What sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Christ.
grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Word of God for our meditation this morning. First reading recorded in Exodus chapter 16. I had a Christian friends. Don't chew with your mouth open. And don't reach across the table. Ask to have the food passed. Wait until we pray before you start eating. Use your manners. Now, parents try to teach their children proper manners at the dinner table. And they're perhaps especially concerned about manners if there's company present or maybe if they're guests at someone's house. But why? Why are parents concerned about proper manners? Well, for one, proper manners show respect for others. It shows an appreciation for that food that has been prepared and for the, the person who has prepared that meal. On the other hand, if a person doesn't show any manners, if they're grabbing to make sure that they get what they want with no concern for others, or if a person grumbles and complains about what's put before them, it reveals a selfish attitude. And so parents are concerned about teaching good manners. They're also teaching the proper way to receive that food and those blessings. Well, as the Lord miraculously feeds his people in the wilderness, it's not just about supplying their physical needs. He also wants to teach them lessons about how they are to receive the Lord's blessings. God miraculously provided food for his people in the wilderness. This was obviously a miracle. Now, some want to find some natural explanations for the, the miracles in, in the Bible. But there's no natural phenomenon that could explain how several million people could eat their fill every day in such a desolate area where the Israelites were. And when the people saw this special bread which God provided, they asked, what is it? Like the name manna comes from the two Hebrew words which make up that question. It's something they had never seen before. And the people were to gather only enough for one day. They kept some until morning, spoiled. Then on Friday, they were to gather twice as much because on the Sabbath day, there wouldn't be any. That would be a, a day devoted to the Lord, to His Word and worship. And that double amount that was gathered on Friday, that didn't spoil. No natural explanation for how that could happen every week. This was a miracle of the Lord. And the way in which the Lord provided for His people in the wilderness was done for a purpose. It was done to teach them. Trust the Lord to provide. It was to teach them that blessing comes with obedience to His Word. And it was to lead them then to receive all of His blessings with thanksgiving. It also directed their attention then to the purpose really of all our physical blessings. The Lord gives not just for our personal enjoyment, but so that we can also then serve the Lord in our lives and in the various ways in our lives. It also directed their attention to the greater and the more important blessings, the spiritual and eternal blessings that the Lord gives. And ultimately, as we heard in our Gospel reading, it pointed them to the Savior who is the true bread from heaven and gives eternal life. And those lessons are ones that the Lord would have us learn as well. Now, Jesus would direct our focus to those things that truly last. Now, Jesus tells us, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Now, how easy for our priorities to become all mixed up. 
Well, that was the, the case with that crowd that Jesus addressed in the gospel. They were looking for another miracle. They were looking for an earthly king. Jesus sought to redirect their focus to the spiritual and eternal matters. And so he tells them, Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. And the Lord would direct our attention as well to that more important food. Even as he supplies, provides for all of our physical needs, the Lord wants our focus, first of all, on those spiritual matters. But trust the Lord to provide. We don't need to worry. We can receive all of God's blessings with thanksgiving and we'll show our appreciation as we obey his word. Now, to buffet restaurant, each customer goes, goes, chooses an appropriate size serving so that there's no leftover food to pick up from the tables. If there's lots of leftovers, well, it means that that customer demonstrated a, a, a lack of control and some bad judgment. When God gave the Israelites manna for food, He promised to provide all the manna that each person needed. And we see that some doubt it. And they saw the delicate nature of the manna, how it appeared like frost and then melted away when the sun got hot. And they came to the logical conclusion that such light nourishment would not be enough, and so some gathered more than they could eat. But that excess manna spoiled. It became insect infested. It smelled horrible. Well, God promises to give us all that we need for physical life. He promises to care for us. He promises to be with us. He promises even that He will work everything for our eternal good. And we're surrounded by so many evidences of God's love and care. Now Martin Luther says in his explanation of the first article of the Apostles' Creed that God still preserves me by richly and daily providing clothing and shoes, food and drink, property and home, spouse and children, land, cattle, all I own and all I need to keep my body in life. If we trust God's word, we can be satisfied in having what we need. And God really says, take all you need, but then take all you need in service to my world. And yet how often don't we doubt God's promises? How often don't we spend a great deal of time Worrying about our finances, concerned about whether or not we'll have sufficient. How many times don't we worry about our, our health or worry about a great many things in our lives? Now that worry shows a lack of trust in the Lord. It's a doubt in God's promises. Times of trouble and sorrow then, how often we complain and maybe even are tempted to doubt God's love for us. And when we grumble and complain, we show a lack of appreciation for God's gifts. But we don't need to worry. Now, King David reminds us, The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. And Jesus assures us, Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your Father. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. And so Peter tells us, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And the psalmist encourages us, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. And so we trust the Lord and we receive his gifts with thanksgiving. On Friday, people were to gather twice as much in preparation for the Sabbath. But again, we see there were those that did not listen. Now, they didn't follow the Lord's direction. As a result, they went hungry that day. And we're not to put the Lord to the test. Now, that was the temptation the devil used on Jesus when he encouraged him to throw himself down from the temple because... God commanded his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. 
Jesus saw through the devil's temptation as he remained perfect for us. But that temptation is one that, that we face as well. Now, God generally provides for us through natural means. Sometimes God provides for tomorrow by giving us more than we need today. We're to be good stewards of what God entrusts to us, to, to plan appropriately. We aren't to use God's promise to care for us as an excuse for, for laziness or to be wasteful or reckless. Spiritually as well. Sometimes maybe we're tempted to, to put God to the test. He promises, for instance, that his elect will not be lost. He promises to preserve our faith. He does that through the means of grace, and yet but we can easily become confident in our faith and in our standing with the Lord and become lazy and, and lax in our study and hearing of His Word. We fail, we have time to exercise our faith and to put it into action, and well, then we're in danger of drifting away from the Lord. And the Apostle Paul, in our second reading, warned us against repeating the sins of Old Testament Israel and potentially losing our place in the Lord's kingdom. And in both of those cases, in the cases of those who tried to, to hoard up extra in case the manna wasn't there tomorrow, and in the case of those who didn't gather extra in preparation for the Sabbath, in both cases they failed to listen to the Lord and to take His word seriously. But the Lord wants us to listen to His word, to put it into practice, and I say, even when maybe it doesn't make complete sense to our reasoning, even when we think we know better. I mean, it, it certainly was reasonable to try and keep some extra just in case. And then on Friday, well, it's been there every morning. It spoils if we keep it overnight. What will make this day any different? Except that the Lord had said so. And where we have a clear command from God, we're to obey. Think of some of the ways that we're tempted to set aside God's clear commands because we think we know better and in fact we put the Lord to the test. We're told to love one another and so on. Well, we're tempted to join together with all other churches. I think, well, it's not loving to separate from others just because of a few differences. But God clearly calls upon us to separate from all false doctrine. And yet, times we're tempted to set aside God's doctrine of church fellowship for the, the sake of loving others. The Bible tells us not to judge. And so we're told, well, we shouldn't point out sin. Don't tell others what they're doing is sinful and wrong. Don't judge. Then God, in His Word, clearly tells us what is right and what is wrong. He calls on us to point out sin for what it is. It's rebellion against God to call others to repentance. And yet, some would use that to justify then even sins like homosexuality or couples living together outside of marriage or sexual relations before marriage. What happens? We presume to know better than God. Now, when God speaks, we listen and obey. Now, the Bible is God's Word. It's 100% true. It's the source of absolute truth and the only source of eternal life. It reveals to us and it gives to us the true bread from heaven, the bread of life, our Savior Jesus. In fact, the temporary nature of the manna reminds us of the, the temporary nature of physical earthly things and our need for that true bread of life that gives eternal life. Now what is it? That was the reaction of the Israelites to the bread that the Lord provided in the wilderness. It was strange and different. It wasn't I mean, the way they would have expected God to provide or that they necessarily thought He should provide. And that was much the same reaction the people had to Jesus. Now, what is it? Who is this? This is the Savior? I'm supposed to eat and drink Him? 
Now that crowd focused on earthly bread, they couldn't accept his words, focused on earthly matters and failing to recognize their greatest need, they rejected him. Now Jesus had sought to direct their attention away from earthly matters to the more important spiritual and eternal matters, even as he would us. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. And they were tempted to say, what? Uh, who is this? The Apostle Paul writes that in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. And say, well, how can that be? It doesn't seem possible. It doesn't make sense to our sinful human logic. And by our own logic, we wouldn't choose to believe in Jesus or believe his claims about himself. But Jesus is the bread of life to whom God draws us. He came down from heaven to give his flesh for the life of the world. He did that with his death on Calvary. There on the, the cross he gave his flesh and shed his blood to pay the price demanded by our sin. There on the cross he gave his life so that we might have eternal life. As the Lord promises to provide for all of our needs of body and life. And we know that he will be faithful to his promises. Even as He provided for His people in the wilderness, He will care for us. We do not need to worry. But just as the point of that man and the way it was given was to give more than just physical food, it was to lead them to trust and, and lead them to faith in the God who gives everything. It pointed them ahead to the bread of life that would let them live forever. And the same is true for us. We can trust the Lord to provide. He is the giver of all good things. He's given us the one and only good. Our Savior Jesus, who is the bread of life. So trust the Lord to provide and do not worry. And trusting the Lord then, listen and obey His word and commands. Trust the Lord to provide all that you need for this life. And then you'll be able to keep your focus then on the more important spiritual food which he gives, that gives eternal life. Amen. Peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Join and make confession of our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Heavenly Father, bestow your grace upon us all, that on the last day you may know that we have invested wisely in your gospel kingdom what you have entrusted to us. Relying on your grace and confident of your continued blessings, we present our offering to you. Accept it, and may it help to prosper the preaching of the gospel. Amen. We join together in the responsive prayer of the church, and we include in our prayers this morning a prayer of thanksgiving on behalf of, of Dave and Carol Meyer as they celebrate their 50th wedding anniversary. Let us pray. Loving God and Lord, you created the universe that surrounds us and the globe on which we live. You control all things through your Son, who sits at your right hand in glory. Give your word power as it works in our hearts and minds. Clear away our confusion and demolish our doubts. Send your Spirit to strengthen both our confidence in your promises and our desire to live according to your will. The signs of the times warn us that the end of time is near. Protect us from scoffers who sneer at your truth. Spare us and Christians around the world from all forms of hate and persecution. Give us courage to carry the cross with patience and joy. Instill in the hearts of our children a desire to follow you as they prepare for future days. Help them distinguish between what is passing and what is eternal, between instant thrills and lasting joy. Encourage more young people to prepare for service in the public ministry of the gospel. Oh, gracious God, you have ordained marriage for the good of mankind and blessed it. Fifty years ago, you brought together Dave and Carol as husband and wife. In your goodness, you have preserved their marriage as a holy and honorable union, keeping them faithful to their vows. You have been with them in sickness and health and provided for all their needs. Above all, you have blessed them both with saving faith in Jesus Christ as their Savior. He asks you to remain with them, multiplying your blessings. Protect them from all harm and danger. Adorn their lives with godliness, happiness, and contentment. Hold in your care, Lord, as well, those who are experiencing physical or emotional pain and all who are afflicted by disease or facing death. Pour out your compassion on the grieving and comfort the mourners who may miss, who miss someone they love. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. Whether we pray together or alone, you will promise to hear and answer us. Give us patience to accept your blessings in whatever way you send them. In your love and wisdom, prepare us for the day when you will take us to be with you forever.
let us pray. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen.